Welcome to the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. This podcast is about all things outdoor photography, including landscapes, wildlife, macro, and more. The show features two talented photographers, Henry Doyle and Ryan Taylor, who bring their different experiences in photography to the podcast. The show is released weekly every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. In today's episode, Henry and Ryan will be talking about art galleries and how they exhibit your work in consignment shops. Henry will be interviewing Ryan as he talks about his experiences in the past couple of years of exhibiting his photography. Welcome back to episode 51 of the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. Um, and today we're going to be interviewing Ryan on the show. Yes, uh, I'm going to be talking about my experience with galleries, uh, exhibits, and uh, kind of like my own like anecdotal uh, experiences and stories, but also just trying to help out maybe people that uh, might be interested in going that term in that kind of uh, field, I guess, of photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And before we start, we just want to thank you guys for all the support. You know, we've, our viewers have been going up and, you know, social media has been doing well. So thank you all. And, you know, we've been getting great suggestions, great feedback. So yeah, thanks for all that. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, if you want to be a guest, we're, we're pretty much, I, I would say we're pretty open books to, uh, you know, any kind of guests, uh, any mm -hmm. outdoor photographers. Um, we love different, seeing, pulling in unique perspectives or different fields that they may work in or uh, anything really. So if you want your voice heard, you know, just give us a ring, DM them us or uh, yeah, just contact us. Yeah. We'd love to have you guys on. So yeah. any, yeah, any, uh, any updates, Ryan? Um, not too much else right now. Um, I just been, cause with the less daylight, it's just been really unfortunate. So I've just been pretty much stuck. Um, just, you know, editing and uploading videos, um, you know, more blog posts, just more of that stuff. It really, um, so not much beyond that. Um, I recently actually did some urban exploration um, this past weekend. That's pretty cool. to get these kind of like gritty kind of edgy urban photos mixed with like nature kind of taking it over again. Oh, wow. Um, and just, you know, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, it's something I'd say do at your own risk, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of the law and also your safety, of course. Um, but, you know, I was, I was very respectful and had someone with me, you know, and then just being really quiet, basically not damaging things or spray painting, tagging things. I was merely there to take photos and just kind of explore it, I guess. Um, but it, it was a really different experience, um, you know, just something neat. And plus it was local, so I kind of knew about it for a while now and just wanted to check it out. Um, so that would be something, a different addition, I guess, to my portfolio versus like stuff that's just strictly nature. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, that was one recent photo op. That was really fun. Um, I did one about uh, also this past weekend, I uh, went to some earthworks, um, some like Indian mounds and other cool uh, structures that Native Americans built. Um, it had these scenic overlooks and everything. And they're very, with the fall foliage, you know, looking very striking. Um, these high tops, these tree lines and everything was really cool. Um, so. That's pretty much what I've been up to lately, but um, cool. that's pretty much been it, though. Yeah, I, I have a you? question. I, I just have a question with the urban. Would you post that on your main photography page, or are you just gonna kind of keep yeah. it in your website and stuff? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. It's something I've been thinking about. Are, are you mean like in terms of like thematically speaking? Is that what you mean? Yeah, like on your Instagram, would you ever consider putting that up, or would you think it's too far away from like your your nature designation i guess <laughs> no it, it's something i definitely it's on my mind a lot now that i've taken these shots um quite mm -hmm. a few i mean i spent a good hour there um pretty much a solid hour um just take my time you know just checking it out get some different angles everything um but i think i am going to go through with posting them on my main feed i guess because i i, I don't know it's I've already been leaning in this direction a lot more lately, um, just doing like local architecture and other historical buildings and, you know, stuff of that sort pretty much ever since the pandemic began last year, um, or at least last year, coincidentally. Um, so yeah, I think, I mean, I was already scheduling the post, you know, I've already edited the photos, you know, before I was recording this episode now. And, uh, so they'll, they'll be up on my, you know, I guess my, my socials, but I just feel like it's something, I don't know. It's, it's definitely a deviation once again, but like, I, I just feel like it mm -hmm. fits because I'm starting to shed the layers of labels and stuff and just be more 
free to you know express myself, I guess, with any image I take. So almost a journalist, <laughs> a specialized journalist, we'll say. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing those. And uh, obviously, it's not it's not you know just urban because you know those old buildings. I'm sure there was some greenery that got in and stuff. So you know, there's still an element of nature as well. Yeah, it was really neat. Um, and we went on, uh, me and who I went with, uh, we went, like, it was a really rainy day. And, you know, there's leaves, like, all over the floor. Because the rooftop, it wasn't, like, fully exposed. But, like, there were cracks in it or just creaky, you know, pipes and stuff. And, like, so there's all these, like, drip drop, you know, puddles and stuff. So, like, I had this really kind of, like, ambiance that was really cool to it, um, too. But, like you said, yeah, it definitely felt like nature was kind of slowly reclaiming it. You know, mm -hmm. some moss on the outside walls here and there. Um, but, like, of course, lots lots and lots of vandals, you know. Um, we didn't see anyone else there, fortunately, but, like, just, you know, broken stuff. Like, you had to wear boots because, like, there's so much glass that we were broken. Um, and just spray-painted every – like, everything was spray-painted, which some of it was amusing and kind of cool, I guess, in a story – like, a storytelling way. But, like, I don't know. Some of it was just a bit excessive and just, like, eh, like live and let be, you know, like – explore it check it out but like sometimes it just felt too much but um but yeah it was fun though it was really fun so i'm I'm really excited to share the photos a lot of them a lot of them like really look cool i think but you know thanks to my headlamp it was pretty dark in there too <laughs> cool yeah that's awesome yep I'm yeah how about you yeah so uh i i've been i haven't been doing much shooting recently uh i got out two days ago uh i got like one maybe decent shot of some fall colors, but I don't really know. Uh, it was kind of funny. I, I climbed a tree to try to get a picture of woodpeckers with my camera um, and sat up there for like an hour. It, it was a very lovely, like very lovely place to sit. Uh, but I did not, I got the woodpecker, but he wouldn't turn around. So I just got his back. <laughs> um, like I got him on the perch I wanted, but he wouldn't turn. Uh, so uh yeah but it was still fun to sit up there um and yeah that was the only shooting i've done recently and then uh i'm I'm pretty excited next uh next saturday um i believe it i think it's 5 p.m or maybe 5 30 I'll, I'll have to check on that um i've got a uh, a panel for i don't know if you know uh what bosque del apache is uh it's uh, sounds familiar so it's it's one of the largest or it is the largest like migratory like park in America, like millions of sandhill cranes and millions of snow geese uh, migrate through there every year. Uh, and this week is the Festival of the Cranes. Uh, it's kicking off this weekend and I'm doing a presentation um, for Bosque, uh, an online presentation. It's a panel uh, with uh, uh, Mar if you know Martin Culpepper, he's going to be on there with me. Um, and a couple other people, um, and I'm going to be doing an, a panel on wildlife ethics uh, for that, so that'll be pretty fun. Um, I believe you, you have to do a donation to register, you know, $1 to however many you want. Uh, it goes to a very good cause, so uh, make sure if you guys are interested to check that out and register. Awesome, man. I'm really looking forward to it, yeah. So at least hearing yeah, about your experiences. I, yeah. I actually may register, too. Yeah, that's really oh, cool. I know the the Saint Hill Cranes. Um, yeah, I think I think that name sounds familiar because it is yeah, like you said, one of the biggest places for like mm -hmm. like migratory stops, um, especially at this time of year. So yeah, that should be awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, and I definitely hope to get out there in the next couple of years. I don't I don't know when, but that'd be great to get out there. Maybe maybe do an in person presentation with them or something. So that could be exciting. Mm -hmm. We're in the field workshop. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be so cool. One can dream. Doing, one doing can out dream. there, man. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny on that woodpecker story, though, because I, I can't count how many times. Um, I, I'm pretty much on the move with wildlife photos, but, like, uh -huh. you know, I'll stake out, of, like, a spot, like you said, um, and, like, it'll cooperate kind of halfway. It'll get on the perch where I want it, but, like, it won't turn towards you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, something is just going to go wrong with it. So yep. that's really unfortunate. And since I was up in a tree, I couldn't move to the other side of the branch to get the shot, you know, because, you know, then I would fall. So it's uh, right. it was definitely That's a some serious dedication, though. Uh, 
Hey, I mean, I, I have I have climbing experience. I'm, I'm pretty good at it, and you know, it's just it's fun too. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I got my camera strap on my camera. I've got it all locked down. You know, I've got my lens cap on. I've got you know everything to make sure the everything's protected as much as you can be climbing right. a tree, of course. Uh, yeah, it's maybe oh. a slight risk, but like it's if I if I fall or jump down, I make sure to hold the camera above my head. You know, hold on to it for sure. So. Oh yeah, you don't want to land on your camera. No, it no, no. probably hurts you and might damage no. it possibly, or yeah. something. How often do you like climb trees for that kind of stuff? It's, like for a shot. It's it's pretty rare. I mean, I'd I'd probably say, uh, now that like the leaves are starting to fall off the trees, uh, it, you know, it's a lot you know more advantageous to climb the trees because you're not blocked you know by things. So it's really only in the right. fall and winter seasons, but it's it's not very often at all. But I, I do it occasionally. Oh, yeah, a nice clear view of it, of course. Now I got mm-hmm. to one more question. I got to ask: What woodpecker was it? Uh, it wasn't anything uh special. I think it was like a flicker. Well, well, that's not bad, but it, it uh, you know, <laughs> it was uh, it was. Hey man, good. any birds? Yeah, yeah, any bird's a good bird. Mm-hmm. Flickers are cool though. They they have a really beautiful, you know, that yellow shaft, the gilded look to it. It's mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah. They got a lot of color in their plumage, of course. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome experience, at least, I guess. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of woodpeckers uh, in my local areas recently. So I'm just trying to get some great shots of those. So. Sure. Yeah, especially with winter, because uh, that, that means the it marks the arrival of like sap suckers again, too. Which is yeah, I, did, I have seen some sap suckers. So it's been pretty cool. Awesome. Cool, yeah. man. Awesome. Well, let's yeah. go ahead and dive into the episode, yeah. shall we? So, uh, like I said, I'm going to be interviewing Ryan today because I, I quite literally have zero experience with galleries. I've been to like three and, you know, participated in zero. So I've got a number of questions here for Ryan and, uh, I'll just go ahead and start with the first one. Uh, so what was your first gallery and how did you get into that? Uh, okay. So we got a flashback to, um, it was like the end of 2018, um, I think it's like about six, it was about the middle of 2018, we'll say. I think it was like that summer. And I was starting to get into really the idea of promoting my work, like outside, you know, the physical realm and, you know, meeting people and, the, you know, the general public at large. Um, so I started printing my work, uh, putting them in different frames. And, you know, and when I say that, I mean, back then, like I kind of cringe a little because like the quality of the work or just the, the presentation was very lackluster and, and you know a lot of those prints either sold fortunately or like they just got destroyed because i didn't like them enough didn't like the quality mm-hmm. or w- whatever about it but um so i started like producing that year pretty much that whole year like this uh printed my work and stuff and it was really trying to create this almost like an inventory as, you know as weird as that sounds uh with just my prints or anything of that sort um, and so by, yeah, about halfway through in the summer of that year, um, there was in my hometown, Beaver Creek, um, here in Ohio, they, uh, they had this, uh, like senior center, basically, um, just a couple minutes drive down the road from where I live. Um, not too far here in town. And it was at a, yeah, senior center and it was, they're opening up this new gallery, basically space in that senior center. Um, and it was a place, you know, I've never been to, of course, cause I'm not, you know, quite frankly, that old, I guess, that, you know, I didn't even know about the existence of the building that had been there for a while, but they were uh, starting up, you know, doing these art exhibits, and that was everything, you know, photography or otherwise, just any kinds of arts, of course, um, solo exhibits, group ones, didn't matter, um, and fortunately, they're still doing them to this day, of course, which is awesome, because I feel like uh, my city needs really some more artsy, kind of like uh, expressive places like that to exhibit your work, of course, but uh, so I was actually probably, I think I was one of the first people, might have been the second, if I remember, to uh, exhibit there, actually. So it was pretty cool um, to really get you know started with not only in my hometown, but also be this like just brand new, this uh, upstarted kind of like art gallery. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I pretty much uh, found their application. I think I got like a paper one, I mailed it to them, you know, old fashioned way. Um, and they were, you know, came back with me saying like, cool, you want to join us in February, 2019. And of course I was like really excited. Of course I got approved, you know? So I was just like, sure, I'll do it. You know? And I had all these frames and stuff already basically ready. Um, I've been making, you know, tirelessly for months, 
already, but I started working on some more stuff to get ready because I wasn't sure how much I would need. Um, so they sent me like details and they're like, hey, there's no commission, all this stuff, which you know is always great um, if you make a sale or two. Mm-hmm. And uh, they showed me the walls and the space. It was a pretty beautiful uh, setting, um, which I'll share in like the video slideshow, like what it looked like. Um, but yeah, I basically went there and uh, you know, flash forward, I guess, to early 2019. Um, and so I had a, exactly a month. It was from February, pretty much the beginning to the end, uh, was my exhibiting time, uh, which was basically what their schedule allows is one month. And so I drove over there. It was like just crazy snowfall. Um, I had to take all these detours because there's all these road closures and stuff. It was just like nuts trying to get there this one early morning. But I was really eager and stoked, uh, honestly. And uh, one of my first YouTube videos was actually about this day. Like I recorded something that day. Um, so you can definitely check that out if you're curious. Um, one of the oldest videos I have on there still. But uh, yeah, so I basically just brought all my frames and stuff. I uh, met this lady, um, Susan Scott. Um, shout out to her. I haven't talked to her ever since, but hopefully she's doing well. And she helped me out um, with, you know, just putting up the work and stuff and arranging it and being like, you know, it looks good here. Move those over, colors, you know. Basically trying to arrange it to feel like a cohesive thing because – uh, yeah, two years ago, I mean, like I was strictly, uh, you know, like nature. I had lots of bird stuff framed and stuff. I had like macro wildflowers. I had some landscapes in there. Like, so like it was all nature, but like the subject matter was like kind of all over the place, you know, a lot more. Mm-hmm. And even more so now, as we talked about a little bit ago uh, with what I shoot. But like, so it was basically just like uh, like a greatest hits, like a collection of photos I've taken at that time, like the past couple of years, and I wanted to like curate it and be it like my favorite ones, but there wasn't really any story necessarily. Like everything was different locations, different, like I said, subject matter, different color light. And uh, basically it was just me just throwing, I was so excited basically, like eager to exhibit. I didn't care about like having it tied to like a central like narrative. I just had it all kind of there, I guess. I, I really wasn't any concerned about it. I just wanted to get out in public, so. Hmm. just very excited basically with it yeah that's awesome um did you did was there a fee to get into that gallery or did they pay you or was it just kind of off the the sales of the of the uh prints that you made any money there it's funny it's funny you say that i wish they would pay me to go and exhibit you know that'd always be uh-huh. nice um yeah no this one was free fortunately so it, I, i'm very i was very glad you know because back then i really wasn't sure about like i mean i I was dead set on doing photography like trying to get full-time and everything but like it was really easing the burden because like besides the expenses of the you know the materials and the papers and inks to make the stuff and all the time and labor of course that i I put into it um yeah they didn't you know of course charge me to get in you know i just simply proposed to them submitted an application and they're like cool um so yeah like i said no commission which is nice too and uh, fortunately, uh, one of my uh, friends, a good friend of mine, he actually bought one of the frames. I think it was like $30 or something. It wasn't like a crazy amount. It wasn't a big frame, but uh-huh. um, so he bought that. And that, that came out of it, I guess. It's like, cool, I made a sale. Um, but uh, I forgot to mention, actually, they, were, they they offered a reception, which is pretty commonplace with galleries and new exhibits. Um, so I just like chose like the first Thursday, I think of the month. And it was pretty neat. Cause like lots of my high school friends, even at the time, like came visited, um, and, uh, people's parents even came in. It was, it was like, it wasn't like a big crowd. Cause it was like a super rainy day that day. And like the weather was just miserable. And I wasn't like sure if I, you know, like I tried promoting it, but it wasn't, you know, just like the nerves of like, I don't know if anyone will show up, but just be sitting there and that's it. But like, it was pretty cool. Like I had about 10 good people. Um, even people from the local nonprofit I worked with found out about it and like visited a couple of them did. And it was like really, really cool, you know, that people actually go out of the way to go like see your work. Um, so this like first experience, it had like lots of challenges and stuff, but like overall it got me so excited about this like idea of meeting new people, networking, just kind of sharing the passion, the excitement of like the photos I took, you know, telling the stories and everything. Um, so this first experience is really just, you know, looking back on it, kind of bittersweet, just with like, you know, where I am now, I guess, which is like so much grander in like two years time. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, overall it was really, really rewarding and, you know, you know, the experience was well worth it. That's awesome. Yeah. That sounds like a, a great first experience. 
Um, so why did you kind of decide once you saw the application to join that gallery um, and did it exceed or um, maybe go beneath your expectations? Um, I mean, I would say it exceeded it because like I said, the inch, like there's some galleries I tried to propose to and they're just like, mm, like it's, it could be a little stiff, you know, and it sounds silly cause it's just like, it's the art world. Like we should all be inclusive, but like, there's been a few times I actually have been turned down at other places because like, uh, maybe it's like just logistics, like their schedule's full for the next year, which is pretty common. You have to schedule stuff a lot, you know, months or even a year in advance or they'll do like an open call for like 2022 or so you have to really get your, you know, your stuff going long, you know, before, but um, with this one, it just seemed like, cause it was new, I could get in early. And like I said, it was free. So it had like nothing to lose um, and everything to gain really with exhibiting, you know, get out in the public uh, for the first time. Uh, so I would say it exceeded it. Cause like I said, just the experience overall, I mean, you know, the reception mm -hmm. and everything, they had some, you know, light, ref uh, light refreshments, you know, just bald water and stuff like that. So, I mean, it was just really neat that they put on this little kind of mini show, I guess, you know, here in the senior center, you know, of all places. Um, but it, it really got me excited for, you know, the future and, uh, you know, the bigger opportunities that laid before me. Um, so, which I've been basically doing ever since then. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, Nowadays, kind of fast forwarding a bit, um, do you seek out photography exclusive galleries or do you look for galleries with uh, many different types of media? Um, I'm, of course, probably talking about cooperative ones here um, where there's multiple people. That's a good question. Um, so it's very, I don't want to say it's very tough, but like it's very, you're, you're narrowing yourself so much if you try to like seek like ex like photography exclusive ones um I, I think there's like one maybe in my area that's like i wouldn't call it a camera club but i'll call it a gallery that uh is like photography exclusive um and I, it does help i guess because you're around people that you know are like-minded but like honestly the ones i'm in now especially like the ones like in a continuous membership with they have they're like a co-op basically and they do have other art mediums but like at those you know i make sure that it's like that the uh, photography is well represented, um, not just by me, but like other people, of course, too. So um, the ones I'm in now, yeah, there's a handful of those of people like me and you that um, they exhibit their work there. Um, so I wouldn't really say it's something I look for. Um, I honestly am I'm pretty much open book. Like I like to look for anywhere I can basically get my work out in the public. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some weird examples. I can't really, it's really weird, but I mean, I had one earlier this year, like a month ago. Um, and it was at like a, like a faith based, um, it wasn't like religious in the sense of like exclusive religious, but like the, the, the owners were definitely faith based and they like had this like open gallery space. It was really cool actually. So it was really centered on positivity and joy and stuff. So it was, it was a pretty cool building and everything. Um, but yeah, they exhibit all kinds of art and basically anything that looked uplifting, uplifting and, uh, whatever, but, um, yeah, I don't really seek out, to answer your question, I don't really seek out like exclusive ones because there aren't many. Um, I more so, actually, I, I more so look for the ones that have uh, like a diverse, uh, you know, mediums or stuff or whatever. Because it's, I just find it all inspirational, you know, at the end of the day, which is why I do it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool. Uh, it's, it's definitely like probably helpful too, not to just be in a kind of an echo chamber with just all photography around you. Um, you kind of have that that different uh, those different works in there. Yeah, definitely. And I, I've always been a firm believer of like we we should all study other arts, not photo, not mm -hmm. just photos, but like which are great, of course. So like I look at photo books all the time and other people's stuff. But like, yeah, I feel like it really is important to like go to like a museum, go to some classical painting art gallery, go to like just anywhere and just or yeah, reading a book, you know, or just get a book at the library and flip through it and like I just feel like it's really important to study the greats you know the great painters of our time or way back when or just you know I don't know anything really whatever it may interest you but like I just find so much inspiration you know drawn from non-photos honestly like sometimes even more so and mm -hmm. uh, like I said like being being in those co-ops does help um, kind of inspire me I guess because I do see like 
a painting and go like, wow, look at the light they painted that with. And like, it gets me thinking about like, like a landscape idea maybe I had in mind and like, oh, I should go shoot that now, you know, at sunset or something like mm-hmm. it sparks all these different things. And like you said, it great is like, it can be like an echo chamber if you see a bunch of photographers in the room. And uh, it just it just kind of becomes too samey sometimes, you know. Sometimes it's neat to uh, the, like the people I've met that are painters or printmakers, or they uh, they I don't know they just do other like really different and kind of oddball stuff sometimes. Like it's neat to talk to them a little bit and get their kind of pick at their brain a little bit and see what their process is, and it may you know it may fire change yourself with your own process too. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, it's it's really good mindset to have, I think, when you're uh, entering a new art form, for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm going to ask uh, kind of like a, a question about criteria here. So like when you're looking for a gallery, uh, like how far away are you willing to go? Like how much are you willing to pay to get in? Like what how big like that kind of stuff? Like what what do you look for nowadays uh, with all your gallery experience when you're you're looking for a new one? That is a great question. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of questions there. The answer. Let me think. Um, so, <laughs> no, it's. Good. I'm glad you asked it. That's good. Um, it's worth. It's worth asking. Uh, so, I, I guess I, I can speak about my own experience. Um, I've driven. I mean, like the one I just mentioned about the uh, like the joy happiness. That one was about almost an hour away, and they actually like cold emailed me like unsolicited basically like a year or two ago or yeah i think it was like last year um you know being like hey we want applicants you know do you want to join us for a couple months and i put it off and then eventually it was just like oh, i'll try it you know because i'm just in like the why not attitude like i'll try almost anything um so which is probably why i'm in so many calories or exhibits as it you know is going now but um so yeah i would say like just do what you can do at first. Like if you can't travel far for whatever reason, be it your own mode of transportation or time or money or whatever, like just stick, stick to your local areas, do your research, your homework and like find places around you. Like my, like I said, my first exhibit was in my town. Um, and if you do enough research, cause you may think on the surface, like, Oh, where I live, you know, has no embracing of the arts or may not about my photos, but like, if you really find, you know, you dig deep, you'd be like, oh, I have a senior center and they exhibit, you know, photography or anything. Like, you'd be really surprised. And I said free entry, so, like, you don't have to worry about that. And it's, uh, they even sometimes promote it and put it in the newspaper, which they did for my first one, um, which is awesome. Um, you know, local newspaper, at least. And so just try to, like, expand your horizons and find places because you may be surprised at where, you know, you may end up, I guess. Um, but uh, criteria, like the, there's two main co-ops I'm in right now, and that's uh, Village Artisans in Yale Springs, Ohio, and uh, Front Street uh, in Dayton, Ohio, which I know I've talked about uh, pretty much both quite a bit on the show here. Uh, those are my regular ones that I'm like a continuous member of. And um, yeah, they're co-ops, but like they, you basically have lots of control over, you can set your own prices, you can pretty much put whatever as long as it fits like what you applied for, or if you have to approach the other members and go, hey, is this cool if I can branch out and do this kind of thing or whatever? And uh, I guess they like vote on it. But like you can pretty much set your own prices and do whatever – exhibit whatever work you want. So like if I have like an idea in mind of like I want to do abstracts, you know, promote – you know, exhibit only that. Like I could switch out my whole display whenever um, because I have like the keys to the place even. You know, it's that legit. Um, so, you know, just stuff like that. Um, sure thing. What was the other questions asked that I haven't answered? Uh, I mean, you pretty much answered it all in one there. Um, I like okay. Uh, kind of with the location one, I'll ask like, what's the what's the furthest one you've ever done, or maybe possibly would be willing to do? I mean, like I said, I'm pretty open to it. Um, there's there's quite a few in uh, like Columbus and Cincinnati, which isn't really, in, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, but like it's a little bit of a drive. So I feel like it, you're kind of like committed to it. <laughs> you know, if you get accepted into them. Um, and that's something I've always considered, but like, I'm just still finding so much traction in the local scene um, and just meeting people out here, you know, where I live, because, you know, it does kind of generate this like customer base, I guess, or just people that become fans of your work and stuff. And 
you know, they get used to seeing you at the same kind of brick and mortar stores or shops and, uh, or anywhere really. So, I mean, like, I find like that helps out most, but, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes dropping yourself in like a place far away, you know, can be also really cool because, you know, a lot of people will ask, you know, where are you from? And, or like even, um, lots of galleries will, uh, sorry, it's tangents, <laughs> but, uh, Lots of galleries, they, they make their own title cards. Like if you supply them the information, like the size of the piece, the title, what the medium is, um, they'll make them for you. But they also include like your name, of course, but they'll include where you're from. Like if it's like a joint, you know, exhibit. And uh, it's pretty neat to just see these like local areas that people are at. And I'm like, I've never met you before. And then like other ones, like they're like the next state over even or something like that. And it's just really oh, cool wow. to see this collection. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool example, but yeah, I mean, it's like some people are way like out of town or whatever. I'm just like, you know, it's pretty neat that they, you know, go to the lengths they do to like show their pieces somewhere yeah. else, you know, kind of far away, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, it's cool. You're kind of, you know, mm -hmm. trying to stay local, but also, you know, at the same time, you know, keeping your options open and, and branching out. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. Uh, I mean, I would recommend... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. I was, uh, one more thing. I was just going to say, yeah, anyone that like anyone that might be listening or be interested at the very least or curious about, you know, exhibiting your work in this such a way, I would just say, get your expenses, like save up a lot of money, however it may be, whether photography is the main gig or if it's something else. Um, and then just set that aside to, you know, produce the work or order prints or make them yourself, cut mats, however you it yourself. And then uh, basically just shop around, like do your research, um, find places, like just start small, start stupidly small and just be like your hometown. Find if there's any places, not even just like uh, quote unquote art galleries, but even like tea shops, coffee shops. Um, I mean, shoot, like the, the health center I'm going in you know, pretty soon with one, I got this one big canvas I'm going to order soon. Um, just find like anywhere and like, don't, I don't want to say noxious, but don't be afraid to like just email or call and be like, Hey, do you accept like, do you need stuff on your wall? Like you'd be surprised that, you know, how many times people would be like, well, yes, we actually do, you know, and you might, you know, exchange business cards or contact info and go from there. But like, you know, the possibilities are almost endless really. And like, as long as you just put yourself out there, uh, you know, and be professional and be curious and just, you know, deliver on your promise or whatever it may be like, you, you'd be surprised where you can end up and, um, so that's pretty much how it's gotten me this far, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Um, mm. so kind of go through your workflow for galleries here. So you've gotten into a gallery. Um, now after that, like, how do you print things? You know, how do you prepare? How do you transport? You know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, there's no right or wrong way. Um, but there's always probably a better way. Um, so I use like large, uh, storage totes and, um, lately I've been doing in the recent, I guess, months or a year, I, um, split them up. If it's like frames or canvas, doesn't matter. Um, I'll like split them up by cardboard slabs and I'll like basically prop them up upright in those rolling, they have like handles and a rolling tote. And like, I'll just like throw those in the car, not literally throw, but like I'll put them in the car <laughs> and, uh, transport them that way, I guess. <laughs> So uh, that's one way to do it, um, but like I don't know, it just it depends on what your medium is or how big your pieces are too, because um, you may get into some exhibit um, that has like only enough space. Like it, let's say it's a group exhibit, and your pieces are thirty by forty, so they're they're pretty large, you know, by that standard. Um, I'm actually in one uh, third gallery. I just remembered it. It's not pretty bad. I have so many. It's kind of <laughs> annoying. Um, <laughs> Uh, I always forget about it. Yeah, I have like three large pieces in there, but like it's like a group. Like it's not just my work, you know, but like it has like lots of other people's stuff for sale. Um, and it just depends on the size, I guess, of uh, the work too. Um, but I mean, the preparation takes probably the longest. I mean, the easily the easiest part for me is like if you have like an idea, like for an exhibit, like a story or a theme. Which I would I would recommend like the the first one I did was a uh, like a fair pass because I was just trying to get out there but like nowadays if I'm approaching like a like I don't know a brewery or like a library or I don't know like some place 
and they're like really centered on doing this kind of thing, like promoting your exhibits, you want to make it really cohesive, like have it be one style, which I feel like is a really professional way to do it. Um, so like be, be specific there. Like, I don't know, like say mm -hmm. I want to do birds of Ohio, you know, and make it very particular to that. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. Have it very yeah. narrowed down to like a unique story or narrative. Um, but sorry, that was a big tangent again. But like, so to answer your question, um, it takes many months of it. Um, and like I said, you can do it different ways. You can order it and have it all be, so to speak, automated. Like, you know, you can order a metal or a canvas print and you can just sit you know, back and relax almost. Um, but a lot of this stuff I did early on, um, I'm kind of lessening a little bit and letting other people control that part. Um, but early on, I did like cut the mats a lot more. Uh, print, you know, my papers and stuff that I bought um, and just put them all together in the frames and stuff that I bought from like stores or even thrift stores, honestly, if they look nice enough still. And uh, pretty much did it that way to really get started, you know, basically cutting costs as much as I can while still trying to be as high quality as possible, um, which can obviously be pretty difficult to struggle and uh, balance with, of course, too. Mm hmm. Do you usually get to look at the uh, the space before, so you know like how many to print, and like, you know, maybe you want to match like a certain color aesthetic to the room, or do you, do you get like a preview of the the general layout? Um, it depends. I would say, honestly, more often than not, I don't. But I do get like maybe a photo in like an email, or like at the very least, like dimensions or something like that. Like, hey, we have. 15 by 15 square foot walls and they have this many of the hanging hook systems we use stuff like that you know they list out like the general requirements or rules like every every piece needs to be and this is almost universal but most pieces need to be ready to hang which means they're like they have to have backed like a picture wire um, which goes across it stuff like that mm -hmm. um but i it's it's one of those things that depends on where you go or whatever um some places when they do these open calls for proposals they'll say um, you kind of, I think it's really kind of all over the place today, but like, I feel like it's really important to visit galleries as a visitor, whether you're going to exhibit or not, like just see how they look and see, like, think to yourself, like, does my work fit in this kind of space? Does it fit the, if it's like a group, like a co-op or something, does my work fit there also? Like it's different. It's unique enough, but like, it's also fits the mold, I guess, because, uh, what I'm getting at is like, there's one such uh, art gallery um, in my area, at least. It's it's a little it's about over half an hour drive, but like it's still close enough. But um, I visited there like a couple times on and off, and I finally went in one day with my application, five example photos printed out, and my check. You know, if they you know agreed to it. And so I walked in there and I was just like, hey, you know, here's my stuff. I'm like, oh great, it's wonderful. But like the problem is, is like I did that. I did that knowing it, but like I still wanted to try it, just give it a shot. But like the entire gallery, that that specific one, was all like old style painting, like realistic classical paintings, and like photos were almost non-existent there. But I was just like, I'll try it. And they gave me a call a few days later, and they're like, Hey, I don't want to like downplay you because like your stuff's great, but like we don't, we only have one photo exhibit like a year. Like they don't have any other like places at that space for me to exhibit and i was like uh, okay like and they're just like i i want to be honest i don't think it'd be worth it for you you know just that one time so hmm. stuff like that can happen um yeah that was just one unique example that happened not too long ago um so and i didn't join them i don't know i thought about it but i was just like eh. um yeah. but uh i do feel like it's important to visit the spaces you know just see how they look or how other people may be using them and it may generate ideas for maybe something you have in mind as well. Yeah, that, that's cool. Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely like, I feel like it's kind of, you really just have to put yourself out there uh, probably more than like any other thing in like the field of photography. Uh, Cause you really have no idea until you go in there and meet the people. Uh, you just kind of get that face to face contact. Yeah. Cause obviously that's, that's really what galleries are about in the first place um so like do you do you have like a like a rotating set of photos or do you do new like new prints new frames for like every gallery you do 
No, they they kind of find their homes in different like in my case where I have more than one place I can be at now, like at any time or at the same time, I'll say, um, they kind of find their homes in different areas. Like what I mean is like certain pieces stay in like for months on end. And then like, I'll go like, Hey, I want to rotate it, switch up the display a little bit, you know, however I want to. And I may like transport to another uh, place I'm at and just do it that way. Um, so it really just depends, but, um, you know, more or less, um, they're kind of scattered, honestly. I'm, I'm pretty much the most chaotic person when it comes to this kind of stuff because it's just lots of nature stuff. And more mm-hmm. recently, I've printed out, you know, my architectural history, you know, barns, covered bridges. It, I, I'm all over the place, to be honest. Uh, but I feel like it does get a variety of work there. And uh, it's still tied under the outdoorsy uh, photog thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's a great question. Um, so it just depends. Um but like I said, it depends on the venue, I guess, too, because like certain – like if I – I've done this before a couple of times where I approach, whether it be in like an email or something, like uh, if they have an open call, I'll be like, hey, I have this idea. Actually, I got one uh, coming up here actually next year, I think, in June. Um, I proposed to them basically that I was going to do like only ICM photos, abstracts on Canvas, oh, and wow. uh, they accepted it. And we – yes, I like – and this one was a much more, uh, I don't want to say restrict, but like they did have me sign. It's at basically at a municipal uh, police station like building that's open 24 hours um, in their lobby, which is like I've been there once visited for one of my uh, buddies of mine, uh, Jeff Smith, had an exhibit of his landscape photos. And it was, it was great space, well lit, um, good part of town. You know, it's just like a really cool spot to be showing like my work or his work or whatever. Um so I like no sooner after that I applied to it and like had like signed like contracts for it and like all these like hold and harmless clause, you know, legal jargon mumbo jumbo. And uh basically was like proposed this little short I guess like an artist statement saying like, you know, it's all like art uh abstracts in nature, it's all like colors and swirls and I um included in my email or whatever some examples of the work. Um and uh yeah, they accepted it. So I was like, Cool. It's just a matter of me producing the work and ordering it, I guess, too, which those would be on Canvas. Um, so I'm going to order those. Um, but, yeah, stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to it, at least. Um, but, That's yeah, awesome. I mean, I'd recommend just visit them. and Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I just recommend visiting them and just seeing how they look and see if you may be a good fit, um, mm-hmm. at least from, like, an aesthetic standpoint. But um, also, like, a realistic standpoint. Like, if you know your work, like, if you're new to this whole thing, which, you know, you know, everyone starts somewhere, of course, but like, don't go for the big, like, don't go, for, like, in my case, like the Columbus or Cincinnati galleries, if you're just starting out, because you know, they're, I don't want to put, put anyone down, but like, you know, they're probably going to turn you down just because of like, your work's probably mm-hmm. not as good as it could be. So like, I'm not even there yet. I don't think, like, I don't feel like I'm ready, if ever, but like, you I know, think just start there. small, start stupidly small. But... Oh, no, no. No, <laughs> dude, I don't know. Uh, I've seen other people's stuff. It's it's quite. Uh, yeah. I don't want to say competition because we're all uh-huh. we're all in this together. But like it's uh, no comparison. But I really appreciate mm-hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. Um. But that that's cool with the ICM. I think people will uh, get a kick out of that too because it's kind of hard to tell at first. You know, if it's a painting or photography, and um, you know, I bet that'll probably lead to some good sales too as well. Yeah, I'm hoping for it. Uh, that's I think that's the first time I actually like not only succeeded in like um uh, like following through with this exhibit, but I think that's the first time I actually like applied to somewhere and had like a central narrative. It wasn't just like mm-hmm. tons of, like it wasn't just like whatever photos I want and just a random like grab bag of stuff. It like this is the first time I think I'm going to be like uh sit myself down and which and be like all right, I'm going to like produce 15, 20, like, I don't know, 16 by 20, 30 by 40, maybe even bigger, who knows, um, photos and, you know, have them all be the same kind of style or genre or whatever of photography. So I'm really looking forward to it in that sense. That's going to feel very cohesive. Um, and even if I don't make sales, you know, I still, I, I document everything I do. So like I take pictures of my exhibits, and the, you know, the reception nights and that way it's just all kind of cool to see, you know, over time, of course, but uh, the neat thing is if you don't make any sales, which, you know, it's always great, but like you could always just move that uh, exhibit, I guess, to somewhere else and start shopping around and be like, uh, mm-hmm. start applying for different places and, you know, 
it's pretty cool because you get it basically becomes like a traveling exhibit and you know people might you know pick up on it more that way too awesome yeah um have you ever considered doing one i know you mentioned your barns have you ever meant or considered doing a, a barn only one or anything like super specific like that would be really cool um because i'm all about local history and stuff um and as my work's kind of evolving to do more incorporate more of that like that would be that'd be a really cool idea maybe i don't know maybe do something kind of like a rustic theme like have some cover bridges or um you know like you said barns or like uh i don't know seeding grain mills or i don't know stuff like that i don't know if that's enough material at least when i think of what i have right now to like make an exhibit out of it if it would it would be like very very small but um you know i'm kind of open to all the all ideas it's just a matter of like getting enough photos to to warrant it, its existence or you know whatever it may be but um yeah i mean that, I'm, I'm open to it that, that'd be really cool um so it's definitely an idea at least but um i guess another tricky thing is trying to balance the artistic like i like i want to make these photos and have them you know be tangible and everything and also trying to make it so it's marketable and uh sells hopefully so mm -hmm. that's a, that's a, a really tough thing i've had to struggle with and um like the abstract photos i thought at first like before i even printed any where like i was just like this is stupid <laughs> like, I, like i enjoyed taking them but like i'm just thinking from someone else's perspective i'm like this is stupid it's literally just me shaking a camera around and it's making color why would anyone buy that? But then, like, I get surprised when people start, like, really just identifying with it and they'll purchase a canvas or a print. And, like, it kind of blows me away what people are receptive to, which is always changing. Depends on where you are, of course, and all that. But um, you may surprise yourself, you know, if you do, you know, as long as you shoot what you love and you, you print it and you exhibit it and you're passionate about it, I feel like that people really identify with it and they, they really pick up on your, your excitement from it and they may, you know, sort of buy into it, I guess, or just follow your you know, journey mm -hmm. as you go along too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, over the years you've, you've done a lot of galleries. Uh, what are some of the favorite artists you've met at these galleries? Like some of the most unique people you've been able to meet. They may not even have to be a fellow <laughs> gallery member. They could just be a, a person you met through networking or, you know, just anyone like that. That's a great, there's so many, I, I don't even know where to start. Um, I don't even know how many, if any of them listen to this show. Um, I mean, I, I know we have well, a former uh, podcast guest. I know that was one, so. Yeah, there's there's a couple on here that um, I've met through there. Like, yeah, Kelly, um, mm -hmm. Ellen, uh, Mosman, um, they're both great. Um, i trying to think of who else. Man, there's, there's probably so many, but like even people we haven't had on, um, Lots of different people. I mean, not even just photographers, but yeah, like, um, I guess I'll just shout out some people like Melanie Moret. She's great. She's been something of a mentor to me. Um, and she does printmaking and stuff. So she's not even really in the photosphere, but like, she's just been really sweet and helpful uh, with uh, kind of just offering advice, you know, hey, you know, like just helping me out with anything. And she's always something to rely on. She's really just honestly great. Um, I try to think. Um, I'm in this one gallery. Uh, I got the, the three big pieces I was mentioning earlier. Um, John Lansiedel, he's he's done like all these different around the country, really festivals, and he's done this stuff all of his life. And now he's basically jump started this little like community, I guess. And I've been a part of it um, since its inception. So he's been really supportive, and he's like very fair on like understanding that we're all kind of working at our craft and. Like we, most of us don't have the money to like go to the big name places. So like his festivals and his events are very low entry fees. And like, he pretty much accepts anyone because he, and there's no commission. Like he's really supportive of like, just do your thing as long as you like it. And like, he's not there to make money off of you. Um, oh man, there's so many people. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Uh, it's, there's just so many. It's, it's one of the best things I think about doing these is just the people you meet. Um, and just the you know, exchanging tricks of the trade and just what you may learn from each other mm -hmm. and um, who you could have on as a potential podcast guest. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's crazy how you meet these people. Yeah, I mean, for sure. It's kind of it's kind of a melting pot of kind of the best artists out there, I would say. So. 
Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so what's kind of your ambitions for future galleries? You got any, you know, big, big dreams or are you just kind of staying in the same ones or what's kind of your goals right now? Oh, um, I give that a lot of thought, of course, because I'm always trying to look towards the future and like where I may be going or where I want to go more so. Um, I definitely want to stay in the ones I'm in now because like the communities there, like Front Street, like it's just, it's just, I'm still meeting people every time I go there, which is only like twice a month, really, when we had the big public openings. But like, I'm still meeting people as I go, and it's really cool to, you know, just network, like I said, and just maybe even meet up to go shoot some days, like stuff like that. It's just it's really exciting, um, the possibilities at least. Um, so definitely staying in my current ones. Um, as far as I can tell, I have no, like, uh, I'm not like wanting to leave those, of course, um, but just doing more and more of it, really. Um, I don't know, just going to bigger, the bigger cities, trying to do the big name ones, or even just try to like almost risk applying to them and see what happens. Yeah, you because know, they may say yes, of course. Um, and just kind of just branching out slowly but surely and doing more of them um, and mm -hmm. just seeing where it takes me. You know, uh, but you learn you learn so much as you go, like the submission process this you know what works what doesn't and uh you kind of learn quickly which ones are more like the higher end uh with quotes around it higher end like galleries where they might snub their nose at certain things uh much more than other ones that may be like accepting of almost anything which could be good or bad of course depends um but yeah i mean just mm, basically more of it so i don't know i don't know i'm not sure if i want to be like someday in new york i don't know that might be a little too big for my taste but mm -hmm. you know if that ever happened that'd be that'd be kind of cool i think honestly i can only imagine that. bound yeah yeah or yeah just like some of it's like uh -huh. you draw the crowd like the people the people know of like the place and they're going there but like they haven't met you you know like they're not going mm -hmm. to see you if that makes sense yeah and you may draw a big crowd and they go wow look at what's happening here this friday like mm -hmm. this random guy from ohio like Stuff like that mm -hmm. just is really exciting. So I, I don't know. I'm open to anything almost. So yeah, it's just a matter of when and how. So how many? I'm just kind of curious. How many? What's like the active count of galleries you're in right now? Uh, I got them. Uh, <laughs> I like I said, I document things so I don't forget because I know I would forget because I've just been in <laughs> so many. Um. Historically, I've been in like, I don't even know. I want to say like at least 10 different places in the past wow. two years. And that's, yeah, something like that, at least like indoor spaces, of course. But um, I'm in three of them, I think, right now. They're like basically, I don't want to say permanent, but you know, like it's like a membership. So it's like your work's in mm -hmm. there however long you, you so please. Um, and then, like I said, it's Village Artisans, um, which is much more like a gift shop art gallery kind of hybrid so it has like lots of like trinkets but it's all handmade crafts from everyone and all that mm. cool stuff but it has like all kinds of art mediums um front street which has just about anything under the sun that's kind of stupidly insane like they have glass <laughs> blowing there they have handmade candles wax melts like and then of course like photography painting you know, just everything it's really cool um, and then the third one, which uh, John Lansedal, which I mentioned earlier, shout out to him because he's cool. Um, Bellbrook uh, Arts, was it? Uh, Bellbrook Artist Collective, excuse me. Um, and there's like a specific photography gallery there. Um, and that's where I have some pieces up, but uh, at no cost too, because he's just, he's that cool of a guy. So just has them up anyways. Um, yeah. But I think that's it. I think that's it. Just those main three right now are the main like rotations. Um, and I'm pretty much free to go and visit them if I want to ever want to like after hours drop off something or switch out work like I'm pretty much uh, like I have keys to most of those or two of them at least and I can you know go there as I please I guess so it's pretty mm -hmm. great so um, yeah it's yeah. pretty neat to have the keys of the kingdom <laughs> yeah that's that's pretty awesome so uh, for mm -hmm. kind of for kind of your final question here just kind of to wrap everything up uh, why would someone join a gallery? Well, there's many different reasons. Uh, I mean, there's many reasons I would I would say yes. Like, like I said, like I've been mentioning throughout the episode, 
um, it makes you really rethink your, I will say this, maybe it's a little different from my previous answers, but like it makes you rethink your work a lot more mm -hmm. when you not only print it in tangible form, like basically like going back to the first gallery I was at, like I had my work, I was printing it, starting to frame it, getting all excited, seeing everything kind of like come to life, you know, outside of like a phone screen. And I was really, really excited at the results at the time and everything. And I was like, but like, that was great on its own, of course. But like the minute I put all those up in somewhere that wasn't my house, you know, that kind of <laughs> thing. And it was really like with the lighting they had and just like kind of taking a step back. And I can just picture it so well now even. And you got those two or three walls surrounding you and just these, you know, just well lit sections. And it's like, it felt, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's pretty neat. But like it just having it out in the public, outside of your house, like finally getting on some wall and getting that like, feeling of just like wow this is it like this is it's out you know it just feels like it's really out in the world and like people may be walking by or visit this place wherever it may be and they're seeing it and just the excitement of that you know you know curious onlookers and they're looking at it and just kind of making their own opinions on it and being like you know just wow that's really cool looking you know you know just anything like that um so yeah that really like I guess left an impact on me a little bit more like because like before that I just was like eh, you know I took the photos edit them and then eh, that's it you start printing them and I was like this is cool this is something different but like the minute you put it up in a public space somewhere it just feels much more solidified I guess the experience I don't know how else to say it um but yeah I mean why would someone else do this it's for I don't want to say for the fame because it's it's not really at least in my opinion it's not I don't do it for the fame I do it for like the connections I guess mm -hmm. like especially when you're physically when you're physically there and like you, like it's really cool and I think people get to not only look at like your pieces or your art and like just look at them I guess because I've gone to galleries when the artist isn't there of course but like when you're actually at the reception or like they're just there and they can actually like talk to you like you're an actual you have a face you're a person and like it's cool because then it's like uh, you know, they go like wow i love the whole exhibit this one piece in particular you know how'd you do that you know what was the process uh you know how many miles did you hike like there's so much you like you can go off of that's neat and um it's not really fame it's not really like I, if you're going into these exhibits going like for the money like you're doing yourself a disservice because you're quite frankly going to be very disappointed because like even if you start out small with like your little senior center in town like like i was happy doing it on its own like i didn't want i didn't i don't want to say i didn't want sales but like i wasn't looking going into it with that mindset i was going into it saying like cool i'm getting my work out there in the public you know i meet people and connecting with them and if i make a sale that's great if i don't oh well that's fine too but it's it's more about just the publicity the connection of it i think that you know i really enjoyed the most and just you know meet people i guess that way through the the photos i guess themselves yeah that's that's great i'm i'm glad you've really dove into that and you've really kind of carved out a a little world for yourself or a big world i should say outside of kind of the, <laughs> the social media realm yeah it's a it's a weird uh kind of like a weird part of what I do because like you know a lot of photographers don't do this I don't think or mm -hmm. like if I had to guess at least but like it's become like such a side like thing but like yeah like you said such a big thing to what I do that like it's just become a part of it really like for me it's like photos in my opinion deserve to be exhibited and um yeah I'm, I'm just gonna continue doing it because you know for the most part I enjoy it quite a lot yeah so, uh, any other final thoughts about galleries? Oh, uh, no. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I hope I hope this episode helps at least someone out there. And if they're at least on the fence or if they never even considered it, maybe they will now. So, um, yeah. If it, anyone ever has follow-up questions, of course, I'm, uh, I'm available. <laughs> you can find me, contact mm -hmm. me, or contact the podcast here. You know, if you may answer your questions on a future episode, or I may just do it one-on-one, -on -one, you know, so stuff like that so yeah you definitely, Hope to see you out you there, definitely inspired me cool good yeah. i yeah i'd love it. i think it'd be so cool if we got some like success stories from anything like we do like mm -hmm. people that email us going like man because of that episode i'm now in this gallery uh -huh. 
at my senior I, center yeah. and like i'm so stoked <laughs> i am in the national yeah. geographic building in washington dc thank you so much henry and, henry. <laughs> <laughs> and it all started with you guys uh-huh. all because i listened to episode 51 <laughs> yeah we can dream man. Uh-huh. i think that would be like the most touching thing to ever read is like something like that like uh, mm-hmm. i don't know anyways yeah yeah thank i hope it helps for listening. Now, on a series now yeah thank you guys cool Thank you so much for watching the Owl Outdoors Photography Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the video version on YouTube as well. You can subscribe down below, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.